I will just keep the timer. Please don't write the diagnosis, guys. I think the diagnosis is there. This is really, but, <laughs> I mean, it's very obvious diagnosis, but okay. Yeah, please see. Thing is that we are doing kind of like a you know, mock uh, mock here. So please don't write the diagnosis here. Later we can discuss. Okay, after discussion, after the station is over. All right. Okay, Manisha, are you are ready. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So, could you please uh, summarize your findings here? Yeah. So, uh, today I have uh, seen on the station, I can see an infant uh, who is approximately three to four months of uh, age. You can see that uh, it is a hospital setting and the child is in, um, has, uh, does not have any um, uh, IV line in situ, but has a feeding tube. Uh, there is, um, I cannot see any uh, oxygen or uh, nasal cannula on the baby. Uh, what I can see that this child is in distress with evidence of sinusis and a porticoid kind of cough, cough which is followed by a whoop at the uh, end. Uh, at the whoop at the end, and there is a mild salivation which is seen. Um, and uh, I can see that there is some amount of. Uh, uh, distress in the child. So uh, for me, I think it is probably a case of pertussis or whooping cough. Okay. All right. Any differential diagnosis you want to keep here? The other differential, I would think of a viral bronchiolitis, uh, considering the uh, age. And uh, since, um, or it could still be a uh, uh, I could not, cannot rule out a viral pneumonia, but bronchiolitis would be second on the list. Okay. So what additional history would you like to take here? Uh, I would like to inquire uh, history of uh, immunization. If the child has given any immunization or uh, if the baby has been in contact with uh, any other child with the uh, uh, whooping cough because it's a highly infectious, contagious disease. So I would like to know that, especially about uh, vaccination, any preceding history of any fever uh, uh, or, or fever, yeah, before that. History of eating. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what examination would you like to do here? So I would like to do a complete uh, uh, respiratory system examination of the baby involving the upper airways, uh, 
uh, and auscultation of the chest. Look for any evidence of any um, adventitious sounds in the form of uh, either <clears throat> uh, crackles or uh, uh, if the baby has any uh, wheeze. Uh, would see for I'll count the respiratory rate to see if there if there is any evidence of uh, tachypnea um, and see for any uh, evidence in front of uh, respiratory distress in the form of subcostal, intercostal, or suprasternal retractions. Um, I would like to do uh, examination of the um, cardiovascular system and the other system examination as well, and uh, see uh, yeah. What what other system examination you if you want to do? Uh, I would like to also rule out cardiovascular system examination, though it is uh, less likely. But uh, I, uh, other than the respiratory system examination, I would like to do the serious system examination as well. All right. So how do you so how do you confirm the diagnosis? Mm -hmm. So, whooping cough is mostly a clinical uh, diagnosis, but uh, if uh, the child is there, I could take a nasopharyngeal uh, swab and uh, nowadays we can do a viral PCR studies and confirm the diagnosis. Is it viral? Is it virus or bacterial? Oh, sorry, bacterial. Sorry, bacterial, mm -hmm. bodytella apoptosis. Sorry. Nasopharyngeal okay. swab, yeah, I could take a nasopharyngeal swab. Uh, and send it for uh, PCR studies. Okay, so then yeah. how do we manage this child? Uh, so uh, if the child is uh, in uh, evidently in this case, I would like to admit the child and keep the child in uh, isolation and uh, monitor his uh, vitals in the form of uh, uh, check for his oxygenation. If the child is uh, is not in is not in uh, severe distress or is not desaturating, then may not require oxygenation. I would start the child secure an IV line and start the child on antibiotics if uh, uh, if the child is on distress and uh, uh, what uh, what antibiotics? Either I could uh, include erythromycin or if sorry uh, not IV orally. Oh. Erythromycin, any of the macrolide uh, group of antibiotics like erythromycin or azithromycin or uh, clarithromycin. Yeah. Uh, okay, choose one and uh, uh, tell me the duration of the treatment. I'm not sure. I don't know what the duration. Do okay. All right. What are the complications of pertussis? So, one is... Uh, um, uh, so uh, it's because some of the mechanical causes because of excessive cough, they can be uh, subconjunctival uh, hemorrhage. Uh, the baby could have uh, bleeding from the nasal cavity or uh, uh, because of excessive cough, they could have uh, uh, gastroesophageal, uh, I mean, uh, they would have reflux. And uh, the other causes, if it's not adequately treated, the... A uh, child can have uh, other serious complications like septicemia uh, uh, or thing. I'm not sure of that, sorry. Or many okay. times, uh, uh, yeah. So if uh, uh, other complications like the child can have uh, uh, pneumonias or uh, sometimes like um, seizures, though uh, CNS involvement in the form of encephalopathy is rare, but that is one of the complications, yeah. All right. Uh, what is the outlook of the this condition? Uh, it is a it is a preventable it is a preventable uh, condition if uh, if the vaccination history of the mother is looked after and uh, for the baby because uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a vaccine preventable disease so uh, adequate uh, vaccination with uh, Pertussis uh, oxide can prevent this disease. All right, the time is up now. Okay, okay. so Dr. Manisha, how was it? No, no, this is the first time I've done a video station, so I I don't know. I mean, you tell me, I don't know, and I've not read Pertussis. So. Okay. All right. Uh,
Okay, uh, and now others can give the comment. So while station is going on, don't write it over there. Uh, yeah. Okay, so others can comment now. You are free to give your feedback. One by one, first video comment, then history and more, or we can just start. Anyway. You can just you can just shoot. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, actually, uh, hear all of it to be very honest, but uh, some part I heard. I feel uh, investigation of choices, not nasopharyngeal swab. As far as I remember, it is a per nasal swab, and uh, then uh, apart from that, the video description seemed pretty <laughs> to me. And in history, of course, you started with history of vaccination. But before that, we need to know uh, since how long the child is having these symptoms. History of contact, you have already asked. And uh, treatment part, I couldn't listen. On examination, you uh, repeatedly said about cardiovascular system, but I really couldn't understand why cardiovascular system we need to focus. Agreed. No, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. He asked for any other system examination. Uh, yeah. I mean, other than the respiratory system, I uh, would... Uh, you have CNS system. You CNS, have yeah. CNS, per, yeah. Per abdomen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so, nice feedback. Anyone else? Doctor, per abdomen for what, doctor? Yeah, basically, the, like hepatomegaly, to look for hepatomegaly, any hernias. Because okay. of the cough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, hepatomegaly because bronchiolitis is a clo close differential. So we know that there's a push down liver in bronchiolitis. So there we can, that's why we would look for the abdomen. And as uh, Dr. Loni is saying, because this is pertussis and repeated, repeated cough, sometimes uh, hernial sites, they become patent. Yes, yes. Is there is there maternal whooping vaccination? Yeah, you need to yeah. ask about the maternal vaccination. Oh. I agree. Yes, very good. Okay, so first of all, like, uh, like just need to ask. Sorry, um, is the maternal whooping vaccinations included in the um, UK vaccination um, in pregnancy? Is it included in? I, I think so. I think so. Yes, yes. One one dose yeah. of DTAP is included. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, what is expected in case of uh, video station? You know. Uh, first of all, like, you know, we need to prepare ourselves, like, you know, whenever study is given, you need to prepare yourself first, okay? That three minutes you need to utilize and just try, try to write a differential diagnosis, everything, uh, whatever you could, like, uh, just think of that. Once you go inside, uh, you have to see the video, so completely, at least once, and if required, if, if, if the time is there, you can see twice, okay? After that, you know, the discussion part starts. The first question, what they will ask is, Okay, could you please describe your findings? Like, so how to describe? So she rightly did like, you know, today, so today I could see an infant of probably of three to four months. You don't know exactly. Okay, so infant, you can just say, um, whatever, like in the hospital setting, in the mother's lab. So having continuous coughing, spasmodic cough with the intermittent hoops and later turning into the, the uh, bluish discoloration of the lips, isn't it? So with the NGT in situ, whatever, like you have to, like you have to say, and you have to tell about nutrition status, okay? All those things, uh, distress, not distress. Uh, then whatever differential diagnosis you can think of, you have to give. So this child is uh, having, you know, spasmodic cough with the uh, poop, like, you know, on the, the, uh, the <coughs> songs. So pertussis, first thing is, I would like to give pertussis, then, Acute bronchitis is the close differential diagnosis. Um, less likely others like, you know, uh, maybe uh, proof, uh, maybe foreign bodies, less likely. Uh, however, they'll be having the future like this, okay? They won't feel really toxic like this, okay? So in case of uh, proof, how, how they'll present? So there will be prodromal symptoms, cold cough, then followed by some noisy breathing. The starter is the main thing, okay? So... Foreign body airway, usually the child is a little bit uh, like probably around one year, one to two years, the foreign body airways is common. 
okay and uh, his tear choking and other things will be there isn't it so next question will be like what additional history you want to take sorry dr loni uh, i have one question yes. i'm dr gitanjali uh, yes, uh, is epiglottitis be a one of the differential diagnosis in this case epiglottitis epiglottitis no. at this is very rare like it's a, you don't mm. get usually after 2 years like around 2 years yeah, yeah. bigger the age is that yeah age yeah. and drooling is a very important factor in epiglottitis yeah drooling would be there yeah yeah, yeah. epiglottitis sick child yeah. and they are usually oh. intubated yeah. Yeah. no epiglottitis you cannot intubate the lady you have to intubate epiglottitis there but there the strider is the most prominent feature mm -hmm. in a strider not, to, not a cough like this yeah. very sick, sick looking and um, mm -hmm. drooly they have drooly like uh, you know things and toxic look uh, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and they adopt the tricot position just to prevent yeah. uh, like an you know, airway obstruction mm -hmm. this is very life threatening condition usually you won't get mm -hmm. epiglottitis in the exam guys okay yeah Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, sorry, doctor. Yes. My question is like, if a video starts like here, when the video started, can I start explaining when the video is there or do I just watch the video first and at the end I explain? Because I'm the kind of person who will watch the uh, video and will start explaining. Does it happen like this as well or do we watch the video? See, thing is that you need to watch the video completely. Uh, so you have three minutes for that actually. So once you watch that video, then only the you need to explain. You need to like while seeing that uh, like video, you don't have to explain that whatever findings you are seeing. Later you have the time for that. So six minutes is for the discussion part. So three minutes you just watch it. What is this? Okay, doctor. All right. Yeah. And uh, so next question will be what additional history you want to take. You need to always tell start with the onset course duration since when the child started having this cough okay so what makes it worse what makes it better so uh, is there any time variation or what did you do for that is it worsening over a period of time isn't it is it associated with the omting and is it associated with fever cold cough cold okay so the onset course duration associated symptoms, any other concerns you need to ask and uh, and the treatment part. So whether they are consulted, any treatment was given for the PP, isn't it? So after this, then you can go further, then birth history, especially like antenatal period, maternal, you know, <laughs> combination. So that it was a preterm delivery, term delivery, postnatally. So how was the PP? Okay, did baby require any admission? Then about the feeding history and other like immunization history is very, very important. Okay, so, so what is the age group when you like uh, you have to start the vaccination against diphtheria? What is the age group? When you start exactly? Two months. Yeah, in UK it is two months. Yeah, two months. Two months. Yeah, two, two three, four. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So either the uh, like in front of sex are it's usually like wholesale or like a cellular, so you can choose. Um yeah. So probably vaccine coverage is not great, or maybe child might have the parent might have missed the vaccination, or maybe mother is not in nice. We don't know. So you need to take that history. Okay. So vaccination history is important and family social history. Uh, yeah, that's it. So this is what I want to take. So what additional history you, you want to take? Would you like to take? You have to answer like this. Next Ooh. question, uh, what examination would you like to do here? So I would like to do general examination from head to toe. Okay, look for the CV rate of the respiratory distress. I would like to check the respiratory rate, pulse, perfusion. Okay, I would like to... Uh, do the risk complete respiratory examination. Okay. So upper ankle is lower respiratory tract. After the or any other system you want to do, like CNS, uh, abdomen, genital area. Okay. And uh, all right. So how do you manage this head? So first of all, like you know, I would like to 
uh, after taking uh, proper histories, I would like to uh, plot weight, height, and head circumference on the appropriate flow charts, document the vitals, do complete examination of the child. Then uh, I would like to have a look at the patient file, previous patient file, similar session done. Okay, then I would like to inform my consultant. Then I would like to, uh, first, I would like to uh, do certain tests because I'm suspecting protosis, isn't it? So, I would like to do complete, uh, like you can say, uh, full dot count, FBC, and implementer markers. Okay, so what do you get in case of uh, complete blood picture? Lymphocytosis. Lymphocytes. They have yeah, lymphocytic leukocytosis will get under increase implementer markers. And we need to do the chest x ray, per nasal swap, neuropharyngeal swap. Okay, you need to send it for the gram staining microscopy as well as a culture, okay? PCR-based test for the diagnosis, okay? Body color protosis, isn't it? So then management part is, uh, yeah. So first of all, I would like to isolate the VP. So I want to admit and keep in a separate cubicle. So why you want to keep it in a separate cubicle? Is it's it infectious. Antagonist? Yeah, it's, it's infectious, yeah. So what is the infectivity period of the protosis, guys? Yeah. What is the, the para in the paroxysmal stage? No, paroxysmal. No, 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 cataral. It starts after the uh, <laughs> cataral stage till the end of the paroxysmal. I don't know, it's 100 day fever, is what it is called. But it, it is first 21 days, it is infectious, and if it is antibiotic has been started, then 48 hours till antibiotic is started. Till then, which is I remember, I don't know exactly. Uh, see, the, before onset of the symptoms, the child will be uh, uh, will be infective at least uh, five to six days before and uh, two to three weeks later after yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's basically there are three stages: prodromal phase, uh, uh, then cattle phase, then you have conv convulsion phase, isn't it? So it is hundred days off. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. And what antibodies you would like to fever here? So you're right. Very good, yeah. macrolide antibody. So probably I would like to uh, choose maybe if the baby is small, maybe uh, erythromycin. Yeah. Yeah. So erythromycin, uh, usually you have to give it for 10 days. And if you choose azithromycin, then you have to give it for seven days. Mm. OK. This antibiotics only it is indicated if the uh, uh, child comes before three weeks of the onset of the uh, you know, mm. disease. Yes. OK, because it, it decreases the infectivity. Okay, it, it decreases the, like, you know, uh, the duration of the, the infectious period. Usually within three weeks, if the baby comes, then only you are supposed to start the antibody. Okay, and you need to reassure parents that, so this is going to be a long-term uh, illness. And uh, so you have to keep coming uh, in the operation department for the follow-up. Okay. All right, what are the complications? So complications are very deadly. Mm. Yeah, so they this can have nemo. Yeah, respiratory, what are the respiratory complications? Uh, yeah, can have apnea. apnea. Small apnea. babies, they have apnea. India. So probably you might have to do the intubation ventilation for the baby. Apnea, pneumothorax, pneumonia, okay. Respiratory uh, failure. Respiratory failure, very good. And in low... Protein energy malnutrition, bronchiectasis can happen. They, they It makes them prone to tuberculosis and all because it's a long duration and it suffers, nutrition suffers a lot because of continuous yes. cough. Yes. So later long-term complications of the respiratory system, bronchiectasis and uh, other issues could be uh, possible. CNS complication acute. So because mm. of the continuous coughing, raised intracranial pressure, uh, subconjunctal hemorrhage, intracranial hemorrhage. Okay. So encephalitis, many encephalitis. Abdomen, you have so hernias. Okay, hysteroptosis, hernias, failure to thrive, cachexia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, it's not a simple illness. So, what is outlook? Outlook is uh, it's a variable. So, depending upon the severity, uh, like how early they'll come and consult and days of the baby, you know, the severity of the illness. If it was smaller the baby, more severe the disease and outlook is not great. 
okay so one more thing uh, after this uh, we need to inform this to the public health department mm. so that is important so notify this so because they have to focus on the uh, the vaccination coverage okay uh, so uh, three doses you usually give at like uh, two three and three months two three and four months and three doses later booster you give at uh, three to four uh, years and again at uh, around 12, 12 to 13 years isn't it yeah all right so let us sir, go ahead with that yes sir, uh, just a quick query what are the notifiable diseases according to the nhs is it given somewhere yeah, yeah, it's yeah, there. It's I will there share in the group. I will share in thank the group, you. okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank there. you, sir. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> okay, next, uh, Dr. Pona, we want to do it. Second case? Um, I would like <laughs> to do uh, development if you are okay with that. Okay, all right. Can you hear me? Jordan. So who is going to do this video station, second video station? You guys are welcome to do it. I am not judging here. I'm not, uh, okay, this is kind of just practice. Okay. Anyone? Otherwise I have to choose someone. <laughs> I think better you choose. I don't mind doing it again, but I'll let someone else do it. Okay. Dr. Sadia, are you there? Mm. Okay. Dr. Dhoni? Oh, why, guys? Just come on, do it. Okay, uh, Rohini, <laughs> are you there? Yes, I am there, Doctor. Yeah. So, see this video. Uh, oh, I thought I was doing development today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, okay, Doctor Puna wanted to do it. It's okay. So let it's her do fine. It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm giving this uh, video session to you. Okay. Okay. Jordan. Jordan. You hear mama? You hear me? Jordan. Jordan. Hey. Yeah. Did you hear me? Mm -hmm. Jordan. 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 You hear mama? You hear me? Jordan. Jordan. Hey. Yeah. Did you hear me? Okay, so this is one part. Uh, I'll show you the second part. Okay, just a minute. Uh... I think people should not write in the chat, please. Yeah, please don't write the diagnosis. Please say that everybody is writing. Mm -hmm. Rohini, this is a. Yes. You're ready? You want to start? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So tell me. What did you what did you find? I um, I saw a, a four to five year old girl uh, probably in a hospital setup. Um, mm -hmm. She is uh, initially uh, she appears to be uh, conscious. I do not see any dysmorphism. Uh, there is no um, 
there is no uh, distress or any kind of uh, supports that are uh, there mm -hmm. on her. Uh, mm -hmm. What I am seeing is uh, initially she appears okay, but then after some time, uh, we notice uh, some staring, some uh, blank staring for a few seconds. Uh, she does not respond to any uh, comments uh, made by the people surrounding her during that time. Um, I do not see any uh, uh, any other movements uh, during that time. Maybe a, some mild uh, lip smacking automatism that is uh, there, I can see. Um, yeah. And then after a short period of time, she comes back to her conscious state and she's now well oriented and she's able to converse with the people. What is your impression then? Yeah, this seems like a, a seizure a disorder with the automatism, most likely absent seizure. Can you hear Mama? Likely. Sorry. Yeah. Most likely? Absent seizure. Yes. Okay. Why are you saying this is absent seizure? Uh, it is absent seizure. One, I've seen two parts of the video. In the first part, she it's a blank staring uh, that we see. Uh, there is no loss of tone or anything, no uh, generalized tonic clonic seizures that we see in the picture. It's just uh, standing and staring movements that, that we can see together with some automatism like lip smacking. Then I saw another part of the video wherein it's showing a characteristic EEG pattern of 3 hertz spike uh, per second thing, which is, which is actually uh, more uh, diagnostic of the condition. Okay, or right. any difference? Any difference in diagnosis you can think of? There is no easy available, suppose. Um, anything you can think of? Um, uh, the differential diagnosis here. Yeah, uh, yes. Yes. In this particular video, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, so uh, what is our typical absence? What is a typical absence? A typical absence and typical absence. Yeah. No, I'm not sure. Okay. And, uh, okay. So what additional history you want to look here? Um, so, um, in the history, uh, we would want to know, um, first of all, birth history is very important. Uh, if there's any underlying uh, um, issue during the birth, um, then we would also want to know about her development, um, how she has been uh, growing and uh, how her milestones have been attained, especially school performance. If she's going to the school, then is she able to uh, concentrate or is she, does the teacher in the school feels that she's really not concentrating because of the stare look that she has? Um, apart from that, uh, family history uh, is probably also important uh, just to know if there's any um, history of seizure in the family. Um, yeah, so I think that would be the the history oh, and oh. and also to know maybe uh, if she is already on certain medications then maybe if there are side effects of that that's something which i would want to know. all right so how do you manage this side no, sorry before that uh, any any uh, examination you want to do here uh, any I system would want yeah, neurological examination is what I would want to do. Uh, also, eye vision and hearing um, is, is what I would really particularly want to do in this particular case. How do you manage that then? Later. Um, yeah, so uh, EEG, I would want to, uh, okay, EEG has already been done, but uh, these are some of the seizures uh, uh, so this the she needs anti seizure medications. Um, so we need to start her on um, the drugs for absent seizures. <laughs> uh, uh, Valproate is one among them. Do you start directly medication or you want to do some some test? Uh, 
for the diagnosis. Yes, so in the investigation, EEG is is a diagnostic uh, investigation, and uh, some of these seizures are uh, they are precipitated by uh, hyperventilation. Uh, so in a child like this one, you could maybe stimulate them by asking them to blow continuously, maybe holding a paper in front of them, so that can stimulate the seizures. Um, um, okay. Other than that, yeah. All right. Uh, so, easy. So, typically, also the pattern. So, what is the pattern? The three hertz spike per second. All right. So, suppose uh, if the easy pattern is not same, so still you want to go ahead with the same diagnosis, or uh, you want to change your mind? Sorry, if there's no EEG. No, no, no. If EEG is not showing three hertz, typically that is no. not there. So mm -hmm. something else, maybe it's lower than that. Okay, maybe two to two point five hertz is there. So all right. So what is the drug of choice for the Hudson's disease? Ituzumab. Ituzumab. Yeah. Ituzumab. 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 Itu
short duration and the short they are very short duration episode. usually post it very brief and post ictal complications will be there easy typically you will get 3 hertz back wave in a uh, typical so it can happen at any age group okay and uh, they are like uh, usually a longer duration post ictal complications will be there typically you'll go you won't get easy findings by 3 years and there could be underlying developmental issues also structural developmental issues also. okay <laughs> yeah okay so uh, actually rohini the like you told about the description of the findings whatever but uh, after that what additional history you uh, you want to take here is you have to start with the onset post duration like when oh, when yeah. it has started okay. so yeah yeah sure you don't forget that okay what yeah, makes yeah, it yeah. worse what what makes it better did you concern mm -hmm. is there any associated any other uh, concern mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. Yeah. Was there any any whistling uh, event or anything that injury or something, any medication, any treatment is going on? Then you ask about birth history, developmental history in detail, the family source, psychosocial history, isn't it? Yeah. So the, the examination part, uh, so from beginning from the head to toe examination, then complete neurological examination. Investigation wise, you have to do yeah, easy. Uh, if required, if there is any neurological finding, then maybe neuroimaging. And easy, typically, you'll get three hertz spike wave discharges per yes. second. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, treatment is a uh, girl child, so I would like to prefer ethosuximab, but however, sodium alphabet is, uh, is also another option. But uh, being a girl, so I would like to prefer ethosuximab. So there's that question which you asked me if it is not the typical three hertz, then I should yeah, say I go typical. for MRI. Um, like it could be a typical. I wanted to mean is that it could okay. be a typical. So, so will you could... still treat it as a typical absence seizure, still with the same? And I would like to refer the child to the pediatric neurologist. So let them handle fall outside, not two four three. All right, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Let, the, let them handle. So it could be yeah, a typical. I should have said that, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, so what is the outlook? Absence is that it is uh, good. Uh, it is, it yeah. starts early. So mm -hmm. maybe the child might have some neurodevelopmental delay and uh, behavioral issues. Okay. Uh, and a typical uh, is uh, like variable, you know, prognosis. Right. So now we have history taking management plan. Anyone wants to do it? Okay, 11 months old. Paul, uh, his name is Jack. So he was brought by mother, Tara. With the history of Recurrent nostrils and not clean weight. So please take a focus history. Okay, and uh, do the management plan.
Okay, it's still taking less than 20. So this is one of the long station in the MRCPCS clinical exam, and uh, you have total 22 minutes for the station. So you have total four, is it 14, 13, I think it's 14 uh, minutes for the history taking, and you have uh, nine minutes for the discussion. I think it's 13, yeah. So you have 13 minutes for the history taking, and the nine minutes for the discussion. Mm. So total 22 minutes. So it carries 10 marks. So after developmental session, this is a, a second highest, uh, you know, uh, the, the station with the second highest marks. Okay. So who's going to do it? <laughs> Nita? Are you there? <laughs> and there at a little bit outside. I think it'll not be the pretty yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Um I can try. If nobody else wants to do it, I can try. No, I want to give it to someone else, like so that they can try. Uh, but nobody <laughs> <laughs> hmm. so Dr. Adnan, Dr. Bushra. Yes, sir, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. You want to take the history? Yeah. A few okay. minutes. Yeah. Sure, sure. Okay. So I'm giving you two minutes for the uh, preparation. After that, we will start. Okay. Okay. Sure. Hmm. Okay, you are ready? Bustara? Are you ready? <clears throat> yes, yes. Sure. So mm -hmm. I'm just keeping the timer now. Uh, okay. Just a minute. <clears throat> 